All right, excellent. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Are we live? Just making sure that we are all set here on the live stream, on the live stream. Let's see here. Okay, excellent, excellent. We'll be getting started here in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Just want to make sure that we are all connected. Hello, Stephanie. Yes, I see you in the house. Yes. Here we go. Just making sure that we are all good. All good, all good, all good. We'll be starting in just one second, y'all. Just one second. Unless you can't tell if you've seen any of my other live streams. Um, new setup, you know? Yeah, new setup, not my house. Uh, fires. Fire is ablaze in California. So I'm going to explain what's going on in just one moment, but I just want to make sure that we are set up all good. If you by chance see a little button that says connect to StreamYard. Yes, Stephanie, I see you're connected. Awesome. Excellent. All good. If you on Instagram see anything that says connect to StreamYard, accept it. It will be the perfect way to add in all the comments so I can have everybody in the same place. So let's make sure that we're good to go. Let's make sure that we are good to go. Oh, yes. All right. All right. We all ready to rock and roll? I see you, Devin. What's up, brother? What's up, Stephanie? All right. <laughs> so, quick story. Quick story before like, I even like jump into today's session. California is on fire. California's on fire from like Northern California, Southern California, like wherever you are. So past couple of days, we've just had like, you know, smoke, ashes, all this kind of stuff, like just fallen from the sky. But then yesterday, yesterday, my family that is a little bit further north had to evacuate, had to completely evacuate, um, meaning another four adults, three kids, two dogs, uh, in addition to our spot. So I needed to find somewhere where I could kind of like just jump away for a quick second, make sure that this wasn't going to be happening, make sure this is all good. So yes, we're live, we're doing this today, um, but that is why I have this, this new setup. Not my setup, love this crib. Shout out to my homegirl, Hillary, in case you're like watching, probably not, but it's all good. So y'all ready to jump into this. Can I get some love in the, in the, in the box? Just like say like, you know, like, what's up? What's up? Give me like a thumbs up or something. I'm using this new setup called StreamYard and just want to make sure that we are good. Okay, yeah, looks like we're good. All right, all right, let's rock and roll. Let's rock and roll. All right, so today's session is all about finding significance, significance from your stories. So have you ever been in one of those situations where somebody is telling you like a story, for example, and it just keeps on going on and on and on and on and on, and it doesn't seem like actually like get anywhere? Or have you ever been in a situation where someone is telling you like a travel story, for example, travel stories that are like notorious for like, for, for, for this, they're just kind of like, you know, they, they go to one adventure, the next adventure, the next adventure. Our goal is to stop that madness. Our goal is to stop that madness. What's up, Shannon Kaysen? Oh man, storyteller extraordinaire. Yo, brother, I was just telling people online that fire's not my house, but still can let you live. So let's do this. And I'm looking in two different places because I got one camera over here, one camera over here. So just as a heads up in case you see me like looking back and forth. So anyways, so yeah, some people's stories just go on and on and on. They're just boring. You just don't know like what they're doing, like where they're at in the story, what point you're getting to, right? Let me tell you something. If you want to make your stories engaging, they have to have some type of significance, some type of meaning, right? A story that goes from one spot to the next spot to the next spot to the next spot to the next spot and doesn't get anywhere is lame. 
That is not where our, our intention is, okay? So our goal is to make our stories as compelling as possible. The trick that I'm about to teach you today is actually the same thing that you can use to elevate any idea into like, I mean, excuse me, any moment into an idea, into a different kind of a story. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today. How to actually take a moment from time and actually turn that into something that could be a story or maybe it's an idea for a TED talk, or whatever that might be, all right? So if y'all have ever been to one of my workshops, you know that all this stuff works best, works best when you have a moment in mind. So let's start off with a moment. Go ahead and put in the chat like a, a moment. Maybe it was a moment from this past week. If I was playing around with a moment from this past week, it would be the moment that we got the call that my brother is being evacuated from Fairfield and they are on their way down to stay at our house. Got it? So put in the chat, Put in the chat a moment that we can start to work with as we start to uncover significance. And you'll see how this can be applied to like any story, any idea, anything that's coming to mind um, in terms of actually so starting to like build things out. So go ahead and put your idea in the chat. Put your idea in the chat. I'm gonna give this a little bit of time because I know there's a little bit of a of a delay between me talking and you know you all typing and like me seeing it, that kind of stuff. Uh, so go ahead and put it in the chat. Oh, by the way, Shannon, I am using StreamYard. Yes, thanks to your brother, brother from another mother, um, Rod. Rodney told me about StreamYard. So um, I'm checking out StreamYard. That's why I'm like looking at two different cameras. Instagram, StreamYard, boom. What? Pro, pro style, yeah. Although I have to say my hair looks crazy today. Just like, it's just, I don't know, it's all out of place. So anyways, tell me your moments. What are these moments that we're working with? What are these moments that we're working with? Cause this gets a lot better once we actually have something that you can like, you know, what up Mindy, Mindy in the house. We were just talking about you. We're talking about these moments, making your moments magnificent, magnificent from mundane, mundane to magnificent. But here's the deal. We have to have a moment. We have to have a moment that you're thinking about. So just put anything, anything that happened this past week, this past year, this past century, doesn't matter to me. Put in a moment into the chat so we can start to play around with your ideas. All right, I'm gonna take a quick sip of water here. Whew, I'm so glad to be set up. What's your moment? What's your moment, Stephanie? What's your moment, Devin? What's your moment, Mindy? I don't know if you can type. Y'all might be driving. Let's get some moments. Let's get some moments that we're playing around with here. Let's get some moments. Okay, great. So, my daughter makes bread from scratch, comes out perfect, but I'm an, on a non-bread <laughs> detox. <laughs> great, great. Second moment. My moment was when the doorbell rang for my interior designer friend to begin the redesign of my New York City apartment 13 years into the making. Boom. Boom. Oh, awesome. I also just realized we're getting some comments from Facebook. What up, Facebook? I see you all. Come on, join the live stream. Storytelling Tips Thursdays. All right, here we go. So, so right now you have a moment, right? My moment, my moment was getting this call earlier this week. Brother and his family coming down. Fires ablaze in California. You know, got to shelter in place even more. Shelter upon shelter, sheltering upon sheltering, right? Got it. So, so you have this moment, right? When your daughter is making bread, you have this moment where the doorbell rings for the interior designer, right? Now, I want you to imagine we're going to play around with the meaning of this moment, with the meaning of this one moment, all right? So, first of all, if this were the best thing, the best thing that ever happened to you, what would what what becomes of it? What's the next step? What's the best if this is the best thing that has happened to you, right? What does that mean? I want you to go ahead and put it in the chat. So for me, for example, for me, for example, if what up, Akila? Yes, Akila's in the house. So good seeing you, sister. Yo, people are joining the chat. You gotta jump in on the chat, yo. You gotta jump in on the chat. All right. So if this is the best moment for you, in my case. It means that I get to hang out with my family. It means that my boys are coming, my nephews who I love to play around with, right? It means we get to jump at the pool. 
I mean, like I, I get some more some more free time just to like to to hang out, to chill, to just to just be right, right. What if this moment was the worst thing, the worst possible thing in your life? What would that mean? It would mean I have no peace. It means I'm not going to get any sleep. It's going to mean my back is going to hurt. It's going to mean I have to go to somewhere else, somebody else's crib in order to do an Instagram live, right? So I want you to take this moment that you that you started off with. If it's, we're going to just distill meaning because you'll see where I'm going with this in just a minute. You'll see where I'm going with this in just a minute. But if you can distill, if this is the best thing that happened, the best thing that can come out of this moment and the worst thing that can come out of this moment. So go ahead and put in the chat, what is the best and the worst? The best and the worst. <laughs> the best and the worst. I see you, Christina. No worries. No worries. We're jumping in on ideas. So we're starting off with, with thinking about significance. Because what happens in a lot of stories is that people will start to, to, to go somewhere with their story, but we're not really sure where they're going with the story. So today we're like specifically looking at this idea of significance, significance. So in order to get this thing started, we want to start off with a moment. Think about any moment. And I was telling earlier to the crew that there's been fires, there's been fires are blazing, fires are blazing all over California. Um, so my brother and his wife, there are three kids, there are two dogs, their sister, you know, and all their stuff came on down to, to the crib down in San Jose. So that's the moment that I'm playing around with. Once you have the moment, we're thinking about significance, right? We're turning into significance today. And this is really a powerful thing. So I want you to think about what is the best scenario out of this particular moment? What is the worst? What's the best and the worst? All right. So let me see. We've got some comments. We've got any comments? Best and the worst. Take a sip of water here. Let y'all catch up to me. For me, best case scenario out of this moment, I get to hang up with my fam. Worst, back is killing me. Gotta escape, need some space. Okay, so best case scenario. I get to celebrate Sage's baking win. And I get to affirm my commitment to the detox in, the, in that moment, knowing that I can trust myself. Worst, I get so cranky about not being able to eat the bread that I don't celebrate her win. I censure myself and she stops feeling good about sharing her victories with me. Right, right? Exactly. We're starting to see the best case scenario, affirming a commitment, worst case scenario, not being able to share future victories with each other, right? Excellent start, excellent start. Let's see, next one. The best thing would mean, for me, the best thing would mean that the world around me within my apartment would now be custom, a reflection of me, instead of merely functional during COVID, right? It would be a beautiful reflection of you. It looks like it, it's, it, it's, it emulates you, right? Worst thing, is that this could be potentially my entire world for the foreseeable future. Double-edged sword, right? Totally makes sense. I, I actually would love to see like what your redesign process is, is looking like, or, like what the vision is for that, because that sounds pretty interesting. I've been putting up a lot of stuff in my, my own crib. Um, many of you know that I shifted my entire life from New York City to California about a year and change ago, maybe almost, no, not, not quite two years, but yeah. So we'd love to see what that redesign looks like. Anyways, great. So we got the best and we got the worst. We got the best, we got the worst, right? Now, I want you to think about it in another way. This exact same moment. I want you to think about it from three different perspectives. We're gonna break down three different perspectives, right? The first one is what was the change in myself? What was the change in myself? So, for example, um, I'm actually going to bring out my my the, my TED talk for a quick second and explain a little bit more about um, 
about how this evolved instead of using my example with the family because you'll, you'll see where I'm going with it in just a second. But anyways, so in my, in my, in my TED talk and my story, it started off with a moment when I was at UCLA and my brother was, um, was visiting. He was visiting UCLA because he was going to be running in the Special Olympics. And this is a big deal for us because my brother has always been an athlete, um, but he has special needs. So being in a place where he can actually participate is always like, a, you know, a blessing. Um, so when I first, first, first told the story, the significance, i.e. the moral of the story that I came out with, was a reflection of myself. So the reflection of myself was that I needed to learn how to be a better sport. The reflection on myself was I need to learn how to be a better sport. Essentially what happens in the story is I'm like walking down the steps of Drake Stadium. I'm, I'm looking out and I'm bummed because Dwayne hasn't done all that great. He hasn't won this race, but yet I like, I realize that I'm kind of being a jerk by not like participating like happily, right? Kind of like going back to your comment that instead of like celebrating your daughter's win, like you, you kind of retreated, right? So the first time I told my story about my twin brother coming to UCLA and its significance, it, it leaned on me. The meaning was I needed to be a better sport, that I needed to learn what it was like to, to participate again in sports and have fun with it as opposed to just going to compete and just going to win, right? So what up Leilani? Chiming in from Spain, yes. We got an international crowd, y'all. This is awesome. All right. So, so yeah. So the first time I told the story, I leaned into what it meant for me to change, for me to be a better sport. But then I realized that there's a billion, a billion different ways I could actually share this moment. So what instead, if this moment wasn't about me, but it was about my relationship to my brother? What if it's about a relationship to my brother? So then I, I changed, I changed the significance of the meaning, which means I changed what I had to put in, in terms of information that people needed to know. So the second way to think about things is what is the change in your relationship or what is the change in your external environment? So the first change was about me. I learned how to, how to, that I needed to be a better sport. The second idea for a change was that I changed my relationship with my brother, right? I had always thought about being his equal but in certain regards, I always thought about me being the one that would need to actually help him out, you know, because he has special needs. And because he has special needs, like, I always knew that I would have to, like, if I, I just wanted to be there to support him. So it kind of changed our relationship because I always thought that he would be there to support him. I, I would always be there to support him. But now I was realizing that he was also there to support me in my own mental growth, my own spiritual growth, my own physical growth, right? But then yet, there's another way that we could think about it. The third way. And the third way to think about it was this changed my worldview. It changed things outside of me. It changed my world perspective. And my world perspective changed because I, I realized that, that it wasn't just about me, a shift in me. It wasn't just about a shift in my relationship with my brother, but it was also a shift in the way that I wanted the world to think about those who had special needs. And that's when I came up with the title for my TED talk, which is special needs and special gifts. So the significance of the worldview was that I wanted people to think about those who had special needs, not only in terms of their needs, but also in terms of their gifts, right? And that was a change. That was a change. It was, it was both in me, it was both as related to my, my brother and related to the world. So, I want you to, 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 to think about, and keep in mind that this is many, this might be one of many meanings. Go back to your moment, go back to your moment, and let's start off with um, one, two, or three. What might be the, if you were to think about this from an internal change, an internal shift, what was that meaning? What was the meaning if, if you, you know, if you went, what was your change, you know? Or maybe in your particular moment, there was a, a better example that reflects on how it changed with you and somebody else. Maybe it changed your relationship um, with somebody else, right? So go ahead and put in the chat, or maybe it changed your worldview. Maybe it changed what you believed about policy. It changed what you believed about, um, about celebrating and then just being a good mother or being a good father, you know? 
maybe it changed what it meant for you to actually like be able to like lean into your creativity and to express creativity during a time of crisis. Oh, I like that title. Creativity in a time of crisis. Woo. Am I coming up with new TED Talks for y'all? I don't know. I don't know. I might be leaning into this. All right. So go ahead. Put into your put into the chat. What are some different ways? Some different ways to think about this based off of either your personal change, your external change, like your external change to others, or your change as it relates to, to you know, your worldview. What do y'all got? What do y'all got? Let me try to jump over here to the chat. Let me jump over here to the chat. Give you all a moment to catch up with me. Oh, and I'd love to check out your redesign. Your designer friend is one of the best. I love it. I love it. We all need designer friends, right? While you're thinking about it, one of the friends I need to get is I need to I need to like up my wardrobe game. You know, this is ah, this is like one of my festive t-shirts, but you know, I need I need a little something more, a little fun for these presentations. What's up? What's up? What's up? All right. So what does it mean? Let's lean into this meaning. Let's play around with these moments. It changed me to learn to trust the process of not being in control and not faring the unknown. Not easy, right? It's not easy. But but do you see how people start to connect with this idea? Because here's the thing about stories. Stories are an evolution of, of who we are, what we've seen, what we've learned from it, and what others can take away from it, right? What we've seen, what we've experienced, and what, we, what we've taken away from that experience. So what we've seen is in the past. We can't change any of that, 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 that stuff in the past, right? Our interpretation of it, though, might actually change. So excellent, excellent. Let me go back. I think I just saw some more comments here. Okay, here we go, Christina, yes. I'm thinking about launching my book during COVID. I thought it was a disaster. <laughs> your point of view, um, you're more powerful than you think. Yes, exactly, right? So that would be the first perspective, that you are more powerful than you think. Because at first, I'm assuming at the beginning of your story, you're thinking like, nah, I can't do this. And at the end, you're starting to see like, you know, you can give yourself power or you can get edified from others perhaps. Two, not easy, but help others. And three, we writers launching during COVID are a community. Yes, yes. Think about the fact that if, if all the people that were writing a book, Christina, were, were part of your community, you know, you could change the, your, your worldview. Instead of thinking about like all the crises that's going on during COVID, you can think about the community that you can build, right? Right? And that's exactly some of the things that I've been leaning into as well with this whole Facebook group, with this whole, you know, ideas that ignite is thinking about the fact that so many people out there have been starting to share stories, have been really excited, have been like in the streets, have been protesting, have been doing policy, you know, have been jumping on lives, have been doing webinars, you know, there's been a lot of change and I'm excited. I'm super excited to be your coach during this process, bringing this community together, right? Let's see, what are the comments we got here? Let's see here, what else we got here? It changed me to learn the trust, the process of not being in control and not fearing the unknown. Not easy. Yes, yes, exactly. Let me jump over here for a quick second to Instagram. Instagram, what you got, Leilani? What you got? Exactly. Exactly. You can see some comments are coming in little by little, so I'll give you all a second to catch up with me. How about you, Devin? Or Stephanie? What you got? If your moment was a reflection of your change in yourself, if your moment was a change in reflection to somebody else, or if your moment was a change in reflection to this worldview. 
And you'll see what, 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 where we're going with this is little by little, next week, we're gonna start looking at like how to actually like outline stories. And we're gonna look at structure. So we're gonna like look at like, you know, what is narrative art? We're gonna look at what is the modular structure? We're gonna look at all, like how to actually brainstorm our stories. So all, and, and our speeches. So all that is coming next week, but then going into September, going into September, we are hitting it hard with ideas and ideas that ignite. So we're starting to lean from the story aspects into the speech aspect and the speech aspects into the idea aspect. So, so this is all building on each other. So any other comments that we got here? Let's see here and go back to, let me go back to the comments. Back, back, back. Yeah, narrative arc and narrative structure are, you know, they're, they're great to know. Um, and, and once you know them, like you are, you'll be, you'll be starting to see them everywhere. You'll start to see them in your favorite podcasts, in your favorite books. Um, you'll be starting to see them in like, you know, like novels. Narrative art also, there's many names for it, but like, you know, there are many different structures that we can talk about. Um, one is like the modular structure. Many people may have heard of like the hero's journey. The hero's journey. Yes. What up, Leilani? I see that you may have lost power there for a second. So yeah. So the hero's journey is one. Narrative arc, also known as narrative structure, um, is, is another one. The modular structure is another one. You know, so we're gonna be looking at all these different ways of actually like putting together like your ideas or these moments and actually making sure that they that they're that they're great, that they're memorable, that they actually flow in the right in the right pattern, right? Before we go into September. So let's see here. Prepping for 2021 TED Talk Harlem. Yes. COVID experience has stripped me of if it's your excuses. Let's do it. Let's do it. You see me in action, right? I got your back. We are in this together. Together. Regardless of like what space I might be in, what physical space, mentally, I'm there. I got you. I got you. All right. All right. So now we got our moments, right? I don't have my um my my whiteboard today because as I mentioned, I had a jam to, to get out of, out of the, the fire zone, but I am gonna draw a couple of things for you, if that's cool. All right, I'm gonna draw a couple of things for y'all. So here we go. So a couple of different ways to think about significance. A couple of ways to think about significance. Your first, you're gonna start off with basic quadrant, right? Basic quadrant, got it? Hope you all got a pen and paper. If not, you might wanna grab one. All right, cool. So now from here, we're gonna put in fur, oops, first. So if this was the first time that this moment has happened or like a moment like this has happened, if it was the last time that something like this has happened, I'll show you on all on Instagram just a second. If it was the best or if it was the worst, okay? So first, last, best, worst. See over here on Facebook? I mean, Instagram, first, last, best, worst. First, last, best, worst. Go ahead and jot those down, okay? So now what you wanna do is like, go back to this moment. Oops, give me one second. Don't want the computer to fall. Okay, there we go. So going back to our moment. Was this the first time that this happened? Was this the first time that your redecoration or that you had to like, be quarantined and and had to think about like how you wanted to change your space. Was this the first time that you were thinking about having your daughter bake and you know not really being impressed with it? Was it? Maybe it wasn't. Was it the last time? 
if it was, I want to reflect back on that first time or that last time. So in other words, what you wanna do is we wanna start thinking about extremes, extremes. So what happens when we start to think about extremes, extreme moments. So I go back for a moment to, to with, with, my, with my own brother, my brother coming down into, into San Jose earlier today. That's, oops, oh, snap. Didn't want to do that to you, Instagram, one second. Okay, there we go. We're back on. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. Multitasking between screens here. Um, so, yeah, what you want to start to think about is, like, the extremes. Mm -hmm. Because what happens when you're able to put things into context relative to other moments, you start, you're going to start to see how you can stretch out the best, the worst, the first, the last, um, the internal, the relationship, the worldview, right? There's many, many, many different ways. Here's the thing, y'all. When you tell a story, when you tell a story or when you're sharing a moment, there are a million, a million different ways that you can actually like break down what, what happened, right? So I think last week I shared the quote that we, we share stories from our scars, not our wounds, right? I would share stories from our scars, not our wounds. Not my quote, but one of my favorites from one of my mentors um, in the storytelling journey that I've been on. So what does that mean? That means that like if something has happened recently that's been traumatic, if you share something today, you know, like if, if, say my, my, my house caught on fire, God forbid, right? But say like something like that caught on fire. Today, I would not be able to talk about it. You know, many years from now, I might be able to say like, this was the time that this happened and it was a traumatic experience, but I learned that I should always have a fire extinguisher in the house or whatever that might be, right? We wanna give things perspective. When we think about things in an extreme, right? We're able to think about what is that perspective? What is that thing that we need to like actually like take from this particular moment? So when I think about with my brother and, uh, and him, him coming down to, to, to stay with us today, um, when I think about the worst case scenario, I think about that fact that, you know, we actually have a house. We actually have a place where he can, where he can go, right? So in case of emergency, there, it, it, it means that we can actually, we can actually like be together, right? Um, and, and what happens when we start to think about different perspectives and different ideas of, of spinning our perspectives, we're able to think about like, you know, actually changing that framework in our story. And every single story that we share is about change. Every single story that we think about is about change. So I want you to think, was this the first time that this happened? Was it the last time that it happened? Was it the best thing that happened? Was it the worst thing that happened? And if it's not, that's great because you can you compare it, you can compare it and put it into context relative to the first time that it happened, or you can put it into context relative to the last time that it happened. Is this starting to make sense? Is this making sense for y'all? Let me go back to the chat. So is this making sense? Because what happens is like, when we start to think about the stories that we're sharing, you'll, you'll start to see that you can absolutely start to maneuver it and shape it and, and finesse it any possible way that you want, you want, right? Have you ever seen somebody present a, a story or a speech or even a comedy routine? And, and then you see it again and it, it flows different or it lands different and you're like feeling it differently, you know? That's because as we start to think about things, as things change, we have different significance, different meaning. Time has passed. I don't feel that same way anymore. It's the same reason why so often I tell people, like, it's really, really hard. What up, JC? It's really, really hard to tell somebody else's story, right? It's really hard to tell somebody else's story. Not because you, don't, you might not know that story. You might actually know that story. But what if their perspective has changed? What if their perspective has changed? Let's, let's look at the divorce example. Right. Say, for example, a friend shares with you that like today, 
Today they share with you that this is the worst thing that could ever happen. I hate this bastard. This like this life sucks, right? Perspective today, day one, life sucks. Now let's take day one hundred and one, right? This person, like you haven't talked to them for for a long time. You haven't talked to them for like a long time. They're out. They have a new boo. They're loving their new life. They're doing the damn thing. You don't know about their new boo. You don't know about their new life, but you're still sharing the story about somebody's experience that you, that may have been shared with you. But is it still accurate? Is it still accurate? As time has passed, the reflection, the change, the significance for that person possibly has changed. So that's why it's important, so important that you share your perspective, your perspective. And if other people or other characters are part of your journey, then of course, like, you know, like you might want to, you know, keep that in mind, but you're not telling their story. You're telling your story. What up, soul brother number nine? Yes. I see you over on the Instagram. What up, JC? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Awesome. Awesome. Yes. So that's that's essentially like what we want to like look at. We want to look look at ways of sharing our perspective, but also like letting ourselves like, you know, if we need to heal from something to heal before sharing it. Or if more time needs to pass, that more time passes before we share it, right? Or we look at many of the perspectives, many of the five, one of the five perspectives that we just talked about, right? One of the five. So is this a shift in me? Did I change? Did I shift? Right? Did I go from somebody who thought I knew about sports, but then realized I needed to be a better, uh, really understand sportsmanship without one shift? Was it the second shift? Was the story really about my change in my relationship to my twin brother? Right? Is that the real meaning of the story? Is the real meaning of the story about like, you know, like how I feel about people thinking about special needs and shifting that to be special gifts? Right? Was this the best thing that could have happened? Because now I know these, these, the importance of people like being in solidarity with those who have special needs. Was it the worst thing that could have happened? Right? Am I still in that place where this is the worst thing that could have happened? And and I'm just like down in the dumps about it. And you know, like I don't ever want anybody ever to 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 go through this ever again. Right? Was it the first time that this happened? Was it the last time that it happened? There are so many different perspectives. Now, now, here is a little bit, a little bit of a, of a tangent, but it all kind of connects back to your story. I gotta talk for a second about mindset. I gotta talk for a second about mindset. I'm, I'm glad that you're loving this, so brother. Yes, I'm glad you're loving this. All right, we gotta talk for a quick second about mindset. How many of y'all, have a general sense of Oprah Winfrey story. Just give me a thumbs up or a, or a yes. Just put yes in the chat if you've heard of Oprah Winfrey's story. If you have a general sense of Oprah Winfrey's story, just put yes. Yes in the chat. Yes for Oprah. Just give me a yes in the chat. Or if you don't, then put a no. Okay, great. Got it. Cool. Got it. All right. We got some couple yeses. So Oprah Winfrey's part of her story is the fact that she had a child when she was younger, right? Born and raised, I believe, in Mississippi, right? Had had a child, was raped, sexual molestation. Um, just like, you know, is right. It's an incredible story, right, Christina? It's an incredible story that literally, like when people say that, you know, that she came from nothing, Oh, cool. Awesome. I'm sorry. I just realized that I can actually <laughs> post people's comments on StreamYard. So, okay. Got it. Awesome. Yes. It is an incredible story, Christina. Um, so um, the reason why I bring it up is because somebody who's been through the exact same experience as somebody like an Oprah Winfrey might, might think, okay, I've, I've, I've been raped, I've been molested, I live in poverty, and never actually, or, or use that story and continue to use that story and to tell that story to themselves, to others, 
as they con as they continue on in life, right? Now, keep in mind what a hope to star. We're just breaking down like some of the the. the I'm shifting for a quick second to, to talk about mindset. Let's talk about mindset. I got to do it for a quick second because it all relates, right? But we're talking about Oprah Winfrey. If you know Oprah Winfrey's story, coming from poverty, having a child very very young, losing that child, being a like abused in all ways, shapes, and forms, right? And think about it. Many people who have possibly a similar story, they don't have to, they, they could sit in this story. They could sit in the story of grief for a long time, a year, many years, their lives. And that could be the story that they're sharing with others, right? What if that was the thing that actually propelled her, propelled her into sharing her journey, into sharing the lives of others that have gone through traumatic things, into becoming a, a mogul in media so that people know that this is happening in the world, right? Oprah was able to transform her entire life by saying, this is not gonna hold me back. This is not gonna change me. So when we look at meaning, and we look at meaning, meaning is the bones. This is like the, 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 the meat and the bones of your story. Oh, what's up, Christina? Yes. Awesome. You know, it's so funny, like on Instagram, social media, sometimes everyone's like, you know, funny handles. I call myself defrizzle because like, you know, like, look at the frizzle, look at the frizzle. Um, and, and another reason why I call myself defrizzle is my mom, like growing up, she'd be like, you know, you know, Dawn, you know, your hair, it kind of looked like a frizzle fowl, right? It kind of looked like a frizzle fowl. I was like, mom, what is, what is a frizzle fowl, mom? I, I don't know what a frizzle fowl is. So like, you don't know what a frizzle fowl? You don't know what a frizzle fowl? And it, like, I, I looked it up online and it was like, it, it's a chicken, a fowl with its hair. Like it's, it's just exuberant. It's, it's like lit. Um, and, and so she started just calling me frizzle um, appropriately, I guess, because of the hair or frizzle fowl. Um, some of my friends caught on to this and they were like, okay, so we're going to call you defrizzle. And I was like, this gets better and better. This gets better and freaking better. Anyways, so a little, little side tangent about my, my name, defrizzle, Don Fraser defrizzle. Anyways, mindset. Uh, so, so, so there are a million different meanings to any moment. We assign meaning to our moments, but what meaning are we assigning? What meaning are we assigning up to our moments? Are we seeing this as the, the worst thing that could have happened? Are we seeing this as the best thing that could have happened? We get to decide. We get to decide. The challenge, though, is that we only get to tell one version of the story. When you get on stage or when you're sharing an idea or when you're testing things out, you can't tell everything. You can't tell all the meanings. You can't tell all, all the meat and potatoes because it's just going to come apart, right? So we have to like lean into significance and test it out. See if it feels right. See if it's if it's fitting well in your heart and your soul, right? Not only in your heart and your soul, but once it's once it feels good here, then move it up to your head. Got it? Start off with the heart, then move it up to the head, because stories are about connection. Stories about connecting with other people. It's about being our authentic selves, right? And if your authentic self is telling yourself that you know what this is, this is this is crap, this is bad. That's my rendition of it. That's what I understand of it. That's what other people are gonna take from it, right? If, if your rendition of it is this is good or you know it's not great now, but it will be, I'm gonna use this as leverage, I'm gonna use this as power. I know you know what I'm talking about, soul brother. I know exactly, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You have been able to transform your entire life. I'm not gonna put you on blast on social media, but you've been able to transform your life quickly by taking your power back, your agency back, by knowing what you want to step into, right? Shifting the meaning, shifting the significance of how we interpret our stories, our, how we interpret our moments is key, is pivotal to understanding how we're going to be able to best connect with people, but also how we can best connect to what our stories are really about. So I got a couple of questions over here. So let's see here. How do you decide what to tell? What seems to what seems like a good, I'm assuming, story to pick? Um, how do you decide what to tell? What seems a good pick to you 
might fall flat in the story. Ah, great, yes. So if you feel like, uh, like um, I remember once I tried to tell a story about, um, about you know, going to Brazil, getting into a little bit of trouble, with a little bit of scandal. Actually, let me see if I can post your, your question. Oh, great. Y'all liking the new StreamYard? This is, uh, this is StreamYard. And if, if, it can, if it says Facebook user, it's probably just because you haven't like allowed StreamYard to profile you or whatever. But anyways, um, it's no problem because I can still see the comments. So, um, so, so once I was telling a story about like actually going on a journey, I was in Brazil um, and I got into a little bit of trouble. I got into a little bit of trouble with, with some, some of my peoples, you know. Um, I'm not gonna give the story away, but I thought it would be a good story because it was funny. It was funny to me when it happened. And when I told it, it was, it was flat. It just didn't seem to, to go anywhere. Um, what I ended up having to do is like to start to, sh to, to once again, to think about its significance. Why, why A, did I find this funny? You know, is there, was there something deeper behind, behind the comedy of it all that maybe translated the better to my, to my audience? B, was I really thinking about this from like the right perspective? Was it like actually the, the true, true story that I wanted to share, you know? And three, you always have to think about the change. All stories hinge on some type of change, right? So if your story doesn't have some type of change, and like I said, from the beginning, in the, in the personal self, you know, or in, in your relationship self, or as it relates to your, your larger worldview, if there's no change, then it's gonna be flat. And if your story is flat, your story sucks, okay? <laughs> right? One of my favorite comedians, uh, Ophira Eisenberg, I remember she was hosting a, sh a show at the Moth uh, many, many years ago. And she used this quote, like, you know, she was, she was talking about how people sometimes tell a story, how, um, how you know, like, they started off really great in, in mathematics, and then they applied to MIT, and then they got into MIT. And that's like their story, right? And she was like, that story sucks, because that story is flat. <laughs> you know, you started off great at, at mathematics. You got into a great mathematics school, a great mathematics program, and now you're happy. Where's the change? That's hella flat, right? It's the reason why when you're listening to a great story, there's some type of conflict. There's something that you really want. There's something that you want out of this moment that you can't quite get, right? So it's about the story about like, you know, you being great at math, but then maybe you apply to MIT and they're like, you have no social skills. So no, you can't be part of this program. And so you struggle with, with becoming more social, trying to get yourself more out there, talking to other people, joining other clubs, showing that you have the brains and the social capabilities, right? Until you finally do get to the other side. We don't root for people when things are just like all happy, go lucky, hunky, go dory, right? Well, we, we, we might if they're our homes, whatever. But in the story or in a speech, we want to see what you've been through. So if you feel like it's flat, we got to change. We got to we got to figure out, like you know, like either a, are we really talking about its true meaning? B, are we actually like letting people into, like ourselves in terms of like things that something that's changed, you know, like like what what do we need to do? We need to like look at all the different ways that this might be significant. Right? So if you feel like your story is flat, it probably is. If you feel like your story is flat, it probably is. So the goal then is to figure out like, you know, how can I, how can I switch the meaning or lean into the meaning of the significance so it feels a lot more compelling? Yes, exactly, Christina, exactly. Christina over here said we root for the underdog. We root for the underdog. Awesome, yes. So th that's pretty much what I wanted to talk to you about today in terms of like significance, like the many, many different ways to think about significance. So to, so to recap, let's recap here for a quick second. So we first think about, you know, the three main forces of like of change. Was this a personal change? Like a change in me and a change in my self? Was it a change in terms of my relationships to others? 
was it a change in terms of my worldview, right? Was it a change in terms of this was the first time it happened and I, and like I finally achieved it? Was it a change because this is the last time that it happened and I'm never gonna let that happen again? Was it the best, the best thing that came that, that from this? Was it the worst, right? There's a million, there are millions of different ways to, to like lean into significance and change. And if you don't have it, if you can't come up with any of these, then it might not be the right story. It might not be a story worth worth sharing, right? It, it just may not, it just may not be the right one. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Great, awesome, yes, yes, excellent. And once again, it all goes back to mindset. It goes back to your mindset. Like, you know, as we start to like distill a moment from our lives, as I start to think about like the fires that I'm escaping from today, <laughs> well, I'm not physically escaping from it, but thank God my family has escaped from it. Um, but as I'm thinking about like, you know, about what this means, yes, it means, it means change. But one of the things that I've been leaning into, especially lately, especially in the time of, of COVID, is the fact that uh, change, change is inevitable, growth, is optional. Change is inevitable. Growth is optional. So how we decide to grow, how we decide that we're going to interpret our meanings is up to us. And that's what's really going to make us really great storytellers, really great people with great ideas that, you know, that might ignite and catch on fire. Um, that's like the essence of, of what we're talking about here. So I want to make sure I, I take some time for questions. Um, take some time for questions. We have about another, about another eight minutes or so going on here. Yeah, about another eight minutes. Um, if you haven't already done so, make sure that you go to bit.ly, bit, B-I-T dot L-Y backslash storytelling leadership. Bit.ly backslash storytelling leadership. You'll be able to grab your copy of the, I, um, the Art of Storytelling and Leadership Workbook. Art of Storytelling and Leadership Workbook. Um, I don't think I can show it to you on this particular screen, but that's okay. That's okay. Any questions? Any questions? Let me just jump over to... Let's just jump back over to the comments. Let's see. Any questions, Christina? Or soul brother? Let's see, who else we got online here? Ideas that ignite. Yes, we've got viewers, we've got viewers all over the place here. Right. Any questions? Any questions? All right. You're all good, Christina. Great. Great. Awesome. All right. Well, if, um, if you guys are all good, I would love to know if someone can just do me a quick favor. Anyone down to do me a quick favor? I am playing around with some new technology, as you all see, um, that allows me to like stream in multiple places. So I wanna know if I can just bring somebody on, on live with me for just, just a quick second, just to say hi, so I can see how this works out. Can we do that? Can we do that? Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Invite. Okay, great. Invite guests to the broadcast studio. All right, let's check this out. Instagram, I'm just kind of playing around for a quick second here. Uh, cool, Christina, you can click on the link See if you can click on that link and let's see if I can jump online with you. 
sorry, not, not to leave you out, Soul Brother number nine. We're just testing a couple of things out here on the stream yard. The last couple of minutes here before we sign off. Because depending on like what works best here, we're gonna be setting up. Um, oh, where? You know, I think I accidentally, let's see here. I'm gonna drop it for you in the, I'm gonna drop it for you in your reply. Cause I replied on StreamYard and it looks like it, Uh, what a money savvy sister. We are just uh, taking care of a couple of things over here. Let's see if I can just get some people to go live. What up? I've been seeing your stuff, sister. Yes, another story to speech to say alum in the house. All right, so we're just wrapping up. We have another like five minutes here. Um, but what we're doing is we're just kind of, oh, nope, there it goes again. We're playing around with, uh, uh, I'm, on, like, I'm streaming on three different places today. So, so, okay. So I'm just trying to see if I can add some people. Oh, here we go. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, how you doing? <laughs> awesome, 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 awesome. You enjoying yeah. the stream so far? Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with StreamYard because I use it also. Oh, you do? Yeah. For, for what? Um, I, I've been helping authors um, get, you know, do readings and, and have discussions and, you know, all these authors during COVID who are launching also. So I've been using that, that platform to kind of help get them out there. Got it, got it, cool. So I'm gonna, I think, let's see here, because I got Soul Brother number nine and Natasha and some other people over here on Instagram, but they can't see my stream yard if I'm streaming it to YouTube and to the Ideas That Ignite page, can they? I don't know. I I, I think they can see it if, um, if, they, if they either said okay to the face, uh, Facebook link or have Facebook, or you or YouTube. Okay, so if I send them the link, I'm gonna try and send you all over at Instagram. Oh, Money Savvy Sister wants to stream, switch to StreamYard, okay. Actually, you are part of the Ideas That Ignite page. So jump into the Ideas That Ignite page, okay? And then we can, can I add more than one person, Christina, on this yes. thing? You can okay, add. Cool. You can add uh, many. Uh, I, I think at least five. At least five. five. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. That's that's how many I've done so far. Up to five people. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So for those of you who are, are just kind of like hanging out, you know, join the fun, or I'll see you next week. Um, people on Instagram, I have a minute left. So join the ideas that ignite page if you just want to like hang out for a quick minute. Um, as as you. Know, your storytelling coach over here gets some water and plays around with new technology so I can deliver <laughs> this coaching these workshops for y'all. So jump over to the Ideas That Ignite page. It's a stream yard party. It is a stream yard party. <laughs> Stephanie, do you want to jump online for us with us for a quick sec? And Money Savvy Sister, if you want to jump on stream yard, we're just going to do this for like another one minute or so. We're just playing around, just getting our technology and also meeting each other. This is kind of cool. You know, I'd love for you to meet Christina because she's already on the stream yard. And Soul Brother number nine, I will catch you soon, my brother. I am going to end the stream on Instagram. So, peace. Okay. So you should Back see on. people at the bottom. If they, if they click on... Um, enter a uh, broadcasting studio it'll okay. ask, and they need to click that link and then they'll come in and then you'll see them at the bottom of your um uh screen 
and if you click on them, they appear on they appear for everyone. And then how do I? Um, oh, okay, Natasha's here. I need to figure out StreamYard too. How long? How do I log on? Okay, so let me give her that link as well. Try that one more time. I have some internet issues. Uh, can we see? Can you see my StreamYard comments on the screen? I tried setting up again. Deep sigh. Oh, here's Natasha. Okay, so add to stream. <laughs> What is up? Hey. Oh my gosh. What in the world is this? Oh, gotta make sure I got them properly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I can put you all. Oh, there we go. I like that one better. Great. What's up? Hey, how are you? Good, 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 good. So, Christina, this is Natasha, Natasha, Christina. Hi. Hello. Christina is doing a lot of stuff with writers during the time of COVID. So I just wanted to like introduce, uh, do a quick introduction for, uh, you know, for the people who are joining this group. A little impromptu, but you know, might as well, right? Yeah. So Christina, do you just want to do like a quick little introduction? Uh, of myself? Yeah. Um, so um, I'm an author and uh, my uh, my latest novel just came out, it's called Beauty. And um, I have started a, a panel series by interviewing and um, having authors read as part of um, the series because so many authors have been struggling trying to find ways to get their work out. So um, I started something called Let's Talk Books and um, it's been really great. I just took two weeks off to kind of recuperate, but um, yeah, it starts back up uh, this coming week. We talk books. Yeah, yeah let's talk books. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's talk books. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And you said that you started this because of COVID, or was this like something you had done before? Well, I had an idea um, to start a series, uh, um, an interview series for people of color. Mm -hmm. um, because I wanted to have like document, um, you know, like how diverse we were and, um, and actually have record of it, you know, so that in like 20, 30 years time, if people are actually looking, they'd be able to find, um, find us. Right, right. And what kind of stories are you focusing on? Um, oh, you mean like, uh, well, I was thinking literary, um, but I don't know. I just got really got into the storytelling idea. Um, I I always had this fear of um, storytelling or speaking because I had a like a stutter when I was growing up, and sometimes if I get anxious um, or nervous, I like you know I I have difficulty finding the right words and whatever. So I've always stayed away from this kind of thing. Um, right. and, and written my words, right? So that right. I think about it, whatever. But I just, I just think like that's one thing about COVID that um, that I just don't want to be afraid. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of giving you permission to do whatever the hell you want. So it sounds like. Yeah, it's sort of like well, you know, it really came home that like life really is pretty short. We don't know like if life lasts more than tomorrow you know so may as well just push yourself to you know stretch to do the most you can do right and so this was the significance that you were looking at when we were kind of like looking at the at your moments earlier mm -hmm. excellent excellent i love it i love it i want to hear uh, so much more but i also want to like let natasha talk and then you know let everyone else that's on the stream sign off <laughs> So, uh, so Natasha, can you give us a little bit of background about who you are? Uh, I've been seeing you blowing up on social media, so I'm like, yo, what is going on? Oh, wait, 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 hold on, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Um, go mic. ahead. Your mic was muted for some reason. Okay. Now you're good. Um, well, I'm Natasha. Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm Natasha Boyce, um, your money savvy sister, helping you have more fun and freedom with your finances. 
And um, I'm really excited because, you know, partly like what Christina said, I mean, COVID is telling us that, you know, how much time do we have? So I've kind of jumped into this last six months of the year where I hired a tech team. And that's why the graphics are so nice because, you know, I every day. <laughs> um, it, take, it takes me long enough just to um, come up with what I want to say and, and solidify my voice. Uh, so I'm also writing a writing a book. So I'm in a book um, writing program that will help you write an Amazon bestseller in 90 days. So wow. I have um, in another month and a half, you know, my my book to promote. And which will basically um, do the same thing: teach traditional and um, traditional um, money principles, and also principles that I've learned just by my life experience. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and then I'll have the book to uh, to actually help me gain more leads for my business and gain more coaching clients. Um, but I'm excited because I I remember um, your first course um, story. To, what was it? Story to tell. A story to speech. Mm -hmm. Story to speech, yeah. So I was like, man, I need, <laughs> I need to, I need to listen to what Don's saying because while I'm writing the book, I'm writing the principles. But what makes it a book? What makes the book interesting? Interesting, or what will make it inter interesting are the stories that go along with what I've learned, how I've helped other people. So you know, not, right now I have all these stickies all over my, um, all over the spare room with um, stories and different tied to different money principles. So I'm super excited for the last quarter. <laughs> yes. Oh, that sounds epic. That sounds so epic. I love how you're connecting the, the stories, like your personal stories to the to the principles, because that's how we learn. You know? That's how we learn. We learn from like we don't we don't just take data sets or like stats or figures. It's like do this and this and this and this and this. Like we actually learn from like when other people do it, when other people see it. When people right. fall on our butts or their faces or whatever mm -hmm. that might be, and and then and but then they've had success, so they've had some, you know, they've come out on the other side. Those are the people we follow, <laughs> right? Sorry exactly. for getting a, a little amped, you know, the yeah. stuff. So, <laughs> so I'm trying but, not to do. I'm not trying to. I'm trying not to do too much because I'm like, oh, it would be great to, you know, figure out how to be a speaker right now too. But I'm like, well, let me just stay plugged into Dawn, and then when I'm ready to jump out there. You know, maybe next year sometime and say, "Hey, I'm ready to speak," and I already have, I already have either my toolkits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited. Excellent! <laughs> I was so excited. So yeah, Christina says so Natasha was in my very first. Uh, um, was that the first cohort of story to speech? I think it was before I even like expanded it from story to speech to sale, because um, I realized that I, I couldn't. Like just just have a course where I'm teaching people the principles of storytelling and taking that to, to deliver to a speech without also showing people how to like translate that into like a TED talk or translate that into like something you can make money off of or translate that into like you know speaking for a living or speaking as part of your living as part of your business you know um, so even though it was already part of the curriculum it wasn't fully articulated as part of like the the whole essence of the course you know. Uh, and now it is. It's a hundred percent because it's you know people want to know like what what can I do with the speech now that I have it, you know. Right. So, so yeah. So uh, as you can see, I've been learning a lot of new technology, yeah. so I can do my group projects and my group trainings um, effectively. You know, so that's why all of September, I mean no wait, all of August, all of September is dedicated to doing these free workshops. Um, mm -hmm. just getting the stuff out there, building the community, because I'm so ready for people to start kicking butt on stages in 2021. I'm so ready, you know? So, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, y'all. Well, I'm gonna continue chatting, but I'm gonna end the broadcast so that like people who are watching this can like be done with it, you know? Okay. Um, but um, if you all want to stick around, I can open a, a room in the um, in the ideas that ignite page. Okay, yeah, let's try that. I want. I've been wanting to actually turn this off, and we'll still be here. Oh, okay, great. Then let's do that. Let's do the get off of the um, live and the broadcast. Okay. Just press end. Bye. <laughs>